time for another edition of the Collector's Corner. Oh, ha. And welcome to another edition of the Collector's Corner. Brought to you by our friends at the Sadistic Penguin Studio. I am your host, the notorious and legendary, I don't know about legendary, Aloha Mr. Han, a man of questionable character to say the least. I'm sure some people would agree now more than others. But today's edition is in regards to Pete Rose. That is why I am wearing a Reds shirt and a Cincinnati Reds hat for the 1975 World Series. Pete's legacy is complicated to say the least. With Pete, the, the achievements are legendary. The 1963 uh, Rookie of the Year in the National League, the 1973 NL MVP, uh, multiple All-Star Games, of course, the all-time hit king, uh, three-time World Series champion, one of those times being the World Series MVP. The list goes on and on for all that he accomplished. But there is always the one large specter hanging over him and that is the gambling and i grew up johnny bench was my favorite player growing up and bench and rose were together as part of the big red machine so i did see a lot of reds games back then because back when i grew up back in the day god i sound like a boomer uh games weren't as prevalent on tv as they are today a lot of the games you would see were on the NBC Game of the Week. And the Reds at the time were one of the dominant teams, along with the Dodgers, Yankees, Red Sox, Kansas City Royals, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. So you saw a lot of those teams on those games. And they would do, uh, they would regularly do double headers. So you got to see like two games, East Coast, West Coast, something like that. And... You know, that's where I got introduced to Johnny Bench. I was I was a catcher when I was playing Little League. Uh, I was a cross, I joked that I was a cross between Johnny Bench and Engelbert from the Bad News Bears. But, and I've told this to Mr. Bench before, and he gets a giant kick out of it. One of my goals as a child was to be a member of the Baseball Bunch, which was the show that Johnny Bench did for years towards the end of his career and a few years after his career ended. But anyway, I digress. But the legacy of Pete is very complicated due to the gambling. Pete got suspended in 1989, a, permanent, a lifetime ban as a result of betting on baseball and betting on the Reds. Now, there are arguments where people will say that, well, he never bet against the Reds to lose. But the counter to that is if he bet on the Reds to win and didn't bet one day on the Reds to win, isn't that basically a signal that he thought they were going to lose, especially when he was managing? So it's a very complicated situation, much more complicated than I can ever get into uh, all the dynamics of it and everything else. Uh, you know, the question again has come up, will he make it to the Hall of Fame now that he is no longer with us? No. And I will explain to you why he won't. Shoeless Joe Jackson is still not in the Hall of Fame. They are both on the permanently ineligible list for baseball. Now, Shoeless Joe died in like 1950 or 51, something like that, and he's still on that list. The guy's been gone 70 plus years, and he's still on that list. And Pete Rose, quite frankly, didn't do anything to help himself in this case. If Pete would have kept his mouth shut, and not shown up at the store safe at home on the main on Main Street of uh, Cooperstown induction weekend. And for those of you who haven't been there before, safe at home is a store on Ma Main Street, which is like three blocks long in Cooperstown. That is roughly a block away from the Hall of Fame. Pete Rose would be signing there every induction weekend. He would sign there on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday and usually he had someone there with him there are separate times where I saw he had with him Steve Garvey was there one time uh, Tony Perez and Joe Morgan appeared there with him on numerous occasions of course both of them are in the Hall of Fame Reggie Jackson was with him one time the last time I was there which I believe they also 
showed video of Reggie and him talking when they were signing there when I was there I'm not in the video but the last time I saw them there with you know with Reggie and, and Pete uh, as part of this Pete Rose documentary that's on Max and if you get a chance I strongly 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 suggest you watch that documentary to understand who Pete Rose was and his eventual downfall and some of the actions he's taken since then that will without question prevent him from being in the Hall of Fame. He'll I don't think he'll ever be removed from that list. Not in my lifetime, I should say. Um I go, I go to a funny story I heard about this. So Ted Williams when he was still alive, approached Bud Selig and said, when are you going to lift the ban on Shoeless Joe Jackson so we can get him in the Hall of Fame? And Bud Selig made the comment to Ted Williams that, well, you know, if you lift the ban on Joe Jackson, you have to lift the ban on Pete Rose. And Ted Williams, being the Marine man's man that he was i mean the joke is always that the characters john wayne played in movies was actually ted williams based on ted williams being the fighter pilot and all that the fisherman and all that stuff but whatever uh to which ted williams replied fuck that guy i don't want no part of that fucker in this hall of fame so you could see the anger that people have towards him pete rose did it to himself now yes you can also say that baseball is hypocritical because you know, Pete Rose, banned from the Hall of Fame, sponsored by, you know, uh, Harris Casino, sponsored by Caesar Sportsbook, you know, sponsored by Bet Sports. They're in bed with gambling now, so it makes the Pete Rose argument all the more complicated, if you will, because baseball is in bed with, with gambling companies for the dollars, but here's a guy who is gambling and is permanently banned now the thing to remember is rule 21 rule 21 states clearly i shall not bet on baseball it's in every locker room every clubhouse you ever take a tour of the clubhouse you'll see it in there i've seen it before in locker rooms before when i've toured different ballparks it's there the players are told about it every spring training so even if they're still in bed with with the gambling with the company you know the gambling companies Rule 21 is still there. He broke Rule 21. Then he lied about it. Then he sold himself out about it. I'm sorry, I bet on baseball autographed baseballs. I, I've seen him selling them. I've seen him. I've seen him sign it. Hell, I, there was one signing I saw where he offered to sign it. It listed as part of the, part of the autographs you could get. I saw, I'm sorry, I bet on baseball costs three hundred dollars more or something like that. So, Pete Rose did nothing to help himself in this in this case now was pete rose the most talented player ever no i don't think anyone can argue that he was not the most talented player ever did pete rose get hit get the most out of talent he had in comparison to anyone else in baseball history absolutely there is no doubt nobody wanted it more nobody worked harder nobody played harder at the game there's no doubt about those things but rule 21 still exists Rule 21 is still there. So that's my take on Pete Rose. Like I said, I don't think he's ever getting in. I don't have a say in it. I do urge you to watch the Pete Rose documentary on Max to understand some of the factors that people take into account when looking at him for induction. And I know uh, my guy Johnny Bench has gotten a lot of grief over time about some of the things that have happened. He did an interview with Dan Patrick last week. I strongly suggest you go watch that too because Johnny Bench lays it out well. He lays it out well, and he did defend Pete Rose. A lot of players went to bat for Pete Rose, and he wound up hurting each and every one of them, especially Joe Morgan. The Joe Morgan thing in part four of that documentary irritates the hell out of me because Joe Morgan was basically the the chairman of the board of directors of the hall of fame or something like that he was in a position of power he was personally trying to get rose in he was trying to get pete rose elected into the hall of fame and rose did something 
in regards to Morgan after his death that is quite frankly pissed me off no end and I think that's going to be used by a lot of people as one of the main reasons that he never gets in that's just my take but anyway that's enough of that let's talk about some memorabilia I have with Pete Rose as I said he was the 1963 NL rookie of the year I do have a Pete Rose rookie card I do not have it here. It is in a safety deposit box because of the value of that card, along with some other cards that I have of value, such as a Sandy Koufax rookie, a Michael Jordan rookie, uh, a couple other rookies I can't recall, a uh, Bird Magic rookie. Uh, it is in a safety deposit box. Someday when I go to the box, I'll take a picture and post it so everyone can see. But moving on, like I said, Pete Rose participated in six World Series, winning three of them. In 1970, he was a member of the Reds, and they lost to the Baltimore Orioles, four games to one. In 1972, he was a member of the Reds, and they lost to the Oakland A's, four games to three. Pete Rose making the final out in that game. Uh, the pitcher was Raleigh Fingers, and Joe Rudy makes the catch and left to seal the victory for the Oakland A's. 75, the Reds get back to the World Series and beat the Red Sox in seven games in what many consider to be the greatest World Series ever played, including the greatest game ever played. In 76, the Reds go and sweep the New York Yankees. Um, that's when Chambliss hit the walk-off home run to get the Yankees into the World Series. Uh, one thing I should mention, Pete Rose the, was the MVP of the 1975 World Series. Johnny Bench was the MVP of the 1976 World Series. Pete Rose then signed as a free agent with the Philadelphia Phillies in 1979. And the Phillies went and won the World Series in 1980 over the Royals in six games, and then lost in the World Series in 1983 to the Baltimore Orioles, who unfortunately beat the White Sox three games to one in the 83 ALCS. The White Sox would have won game four. They would have went to the World Series because they had, they had Lamar Hoyt lined up for game five. The Orioles, and they will even admit it, because I've had two of them admit it to me. They were not going to beat Hoyt. They knew it. They had to win in four. They knew they had to win in four. Like I said, I've had two of the Hall of Famers from that team admit to me that if they would have went to game five, they'd probably lose because of Hoyt. But whatever. And then, obviously, Pete Rose goes back, goes to spends a year in Montreal, or part of a year in Montreal, I should say, in 1984, and then is traded back to the Reds and becomes player-manager where in 1985, on September 9th, my birthday, remember that, September 9th, 1985, he ties Ty Cobb for the all-time hit record with 4,192, or 91. Two days later, on September 11th, he sets the record with 4,192 against the San Diego Padres and Eric Schaub. Uh One of his old nemesis is, is on first base, and Steve Garvey, who gives him a Harvey, hearty handshake. You know, obviously the celebration begins in Cincinnati. One note, when he tied the record with 41.91, it was at Wrigley Field. But anyway, so what do I got to show? So I got a lot of World Series stuff and stuff like that. I'm going to start with a, a card I completed. I referenced this earlier when I saw both Rose and Reggie Jackson at Safe at Home. This is a this was a 1975 Topps. MVP card for the 1973 season. You can see 1973 most valuable players Reggie Jackson and Pete Rose. I had both of them sign it that day and it was uh, quite an interesting conversation the two of them were having. Let me just say it was basically good friends busting each other's balls. The next thing I want to show are somewhat related items but let me uh, th there's a link between the next few items. First is this is a Hostess three, you know, this used to be on the back, the bottom of the box of Hostess, like Cupcakes, Twinkies, and all that. As you can see, I've gotten all three players to sign it, Fisk, Rose, and Marty Perez. Now, Marty Perez, Marty, sorry, doesn't matter in this as much as Rose and Fisk. Why do I say Rose and Fisk matter in this? Because Rose and Fisk were key contributors in the 1975 World Series. And of course, one of baseball's most famous moments is when Carlton Fisk hit the home run to end game six and force a game seven 
for the 1975 World Series, which the Reds would go on to win. This is a ticket stub from Game 6 of that series, signed by Carlton Fisk. You can see it's authenticated there uh, by PSA. The stub's authentic. PSA DNA cert for the autograph. Now, also I will add, I also have something else uh, signifying that game. I have this postcard that I have all of the people, almost all of the people who were on the field sign it. The only people that are missing from this are Ken Griffey Sr., who was the right fielder, and Cesar Geronimo, who was a center fielder, and Pat Darcy, who was the pitcher. I have Joe Morgan on here. You can see him there. There's Joe Morgan. Uh, Pete's on here. Where is Pete at? Pete Rose is up here. You can see it right there. Johnny Bench right there. Fisk is... Where's Fisk? Where's Fisk? Fisk is right there. Freddie Lynn was in the on-deck circle, so I got him to sign this. You can see Foster, Concepcion, Perez. Uh, you can see them all. Now, one thing also to remember about Pete Rose, specific to 1975... Pete Rose started 1975 as a left fielder. Sparky Anderson wanted to get more power in the lineup, so he asked Pete to move to third base so he could put George Foster in left field. Pete moved to third base, and the, that's when the big red machine really took off in 1975. If you look back, they were playing good, but they finished with 108 games, and some of that has to do with the tweak to the lineup to get Foster in there. That's when they seemed to really take off and hit their peak. Now, a couple other things I'll add for, you know, the sake of this. This is a ticket for Game 7 of the 1975 World Series. As you can see, Pete Rose autograph, World Series MVP, and the caption, Big Red Machine. That's right, they were the Big Red Machine. Now, as you know, there were other members of the Big Red Machine that I've also managed to get autographs for. But first, let me show this. This is a baseball that my mother got me off of QVC in the late 80s. You can see it's autographed by Pete Rose, and it has, it's faded with age, but you can see, let me turn it there, does that look better? You can see, September 11th, 1997, is when this was done, so that to commemorate the anniversary of him breaking the record. With the, with the postage stamp on there, too. My mom picked that up for me at QVC. She watched that she watched that channel endlessly and bought all kinds of shit from there. It, it was humorous, some of the stuff. Uh, the, the grandkids got for Christmas, that was from QVC. But anyway, so moving on. You know, like I said, there's other members of that team that I have autographs for. This is a Joe Morgan autographed baseball with a 75 and 76 uh, MVP. Uh, inscription on it. He was the MVP for 1975-1976 in the National League. The AL MVP in 75 was Fred Lynn of the Boston Red Sox and the MVP in the American League in 76 was Thurman Munchen of the New York Yankees which equated to the matchups in the World Series which I find just an interesting thing. Another autograph I have is George Foster from the 75 NLCS Game 2 autograph ticket, George Foster, Big Red Machine. Now, you, I have Tony Perez. Game 5 of the 1975 World Series. Hit two home runs in this game. Two home run game, Big Red Machine. Now, this is from 1976, but you know I had to show it because of who it is. Johnny Bench, Game 4, two home runs, World Series MVP, Big Red Machine hit two home runs in this game to to give the the to give the Reds the sweep. Now, one other thing I'm going to show as we're getting close to the 20 minute mark is a ticket stub I have. Now, this is from Game Two of the 1972 World Series. What's the significance of this? It's a game that the Reds lost. Uh, Joe um, Joe Rudy makes an incredible incredible play in the ninth inning. Uh, against the left field wall. If you ever get a chance, go watch it on YouTube. It's out there. Uh, you can actually watch the whole game if you want on YouTube. Game 2 in the 1972 World Series is out there. But this game, Game 2, is the last public appearance of Jackie Robinson. Uh, that's when he gives his speech about wanting to see a black face in the dugout managing the teams and all of that. Um, he unfortunately passed away like 10 days later 
after that appearance. So that was his final public appearance. So that's what makes that ticket so nice and historic. But that's really all I got. If you got any questions, want, want to see if I got anything? Oh, I forgot one more thing I have to show. So I got this too. I had this done a long time ago. That is a stat ball with Pete Rose. You can see, you know, uh, a lot of his stats. Hit King, 42-56. Uh, 63 Rookie of the Year, 73 MVP, 75 World Series MVP. You can see all that there. And he was the Sports Illustrated 1975 Sportsman of the Year. Had that done years ago. Uh, he, uh, I just love how that cover looks, the coloring on it and all that. So uh, that's all I got. I know I rambled a little bit, but like I said, Pete Rose is a complicated subject to discuss. Hope you liked it. If you want to see anything and you think I may have it, let me know. I'll take a look. Thanks. Later.